Hello, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to another week of Ask Coach Marie. I'm Marie O'Neill, founder of Padma Life Coaching, and your host on this series. This is the place where you ask a question, and I give my unique opinion as a life renewal coach, astrologer, and past life regression facilitator. Please know that I am not a therapist, and I will never tell you what you must do. Each week on Friday, a new video is released with me answering two questions from the viewers. I also talk about various other life renewal topics. So let's go ahead and get started with the questions from this week. Our first question comes from Fred, who is in New York. Fred says, how did you become a Guru Rinpoche follower? That's a really good question, Fred, and thank you for asking it. Just a little bit of background on Guru Rinpoche because I'm aware, I'm keenly aware that a lot of people watching this video have no idea who Guru Rinpoche is. Guru Rinpoche is a mystic and Vajra master who lived during the eighth and ninth centuries. He is credited with being one of the Indian masters who brought tantric Buddhism to Tibet. He is also a, a Buddhist master who opened the first monastery in Tibet. And one of his other names is Padmasambhava. And it is said that he is an emanation of the Buddha Shakyamuni. So that's just a little bit of information about Guru Rinpoche. I do have a picture here that I can, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but let's see if I can do it over here. This is a picture that was in, um, uh, that I got from a retreat that I attended, a Buddhist retreat. And this picture is from one of the, the, the statue that is of him in Tibet, in that Tibetan monastery. So he definitely was a, um, he was from um, medieval India and went to Tibet, as a matter of fact, to as the behest of the king of Tibet because they were dealing with demons in uh, Tibet. And Guru Rinpoche, having gone through a lot of uh, training himself and achieved full enlightenment, he was able to actually to battle with the demons. And anyway, it's a, it's a long story. The, if you want to learn more about Guru Rinpoche, there's plenty of information out here on the web. And there is, there's a wonderful book, I believe it's called To the Lotus, The Lotus Born. And there's a couple of YouTube documentaries available too on Guru Rinpoche. How I got involved is way back when, years ago, I had ordered a Shambhala Sun, the magazine, just to get information and I, you know anyway I had no intention of becoming Buddhist or any or becoming involved in any other religion for that matter when I got the magazine there was an ad in there for a trip to Bhutan which I of course initially rejected but over time decided yes I need to go didn't know why I needed to go because it was a Buddhist trip I knew nothing about Buddhism. When I got there, my guide and the, the people who were in the monasteries, of course, you know, gave us tours and talked to us about the, you know, the, the Buddhism and showed us a lot of beautiful tankas and lots of just, you know, it, it was just glorious to actually be there. When I got home, I looked at 
I, I wanted to learn more about Buddhism. So I found a place to actually study. Now, when I was in Bhutan, Bhutan was the first place that I, I encountered Guru Rinpoche because there are tankas to him or tankas of him. There's pictures on in the monasteries and um, he is revered. I came home, started studying, and of course, ultimately uh, became a Buddhist and uh, started studying about him more and using his mantra, which is Om Mani Padme Om. Uh, that's a mantra that you can also find on the web. Now, ultimately, I am a devotee of the great mother, the great mother goddess. The great mother goddess is pregnant with both masculine and feminine. I'm saying this because what I believe is that we need both masculine and feminine energies, which of course, in some traditions, you have masculine deities and feminine deities. And what I like to do is when I need help, when I need that masculine help, when I need protection, when I need an, uh, an idea or something, I will go to the male uh, deities for that. I had an incident a few years ago where I was frightened. Something had happened and it totally scared me in a dream. And I immediately in the dream started reciting the mantra and I calmed down and the, what was there in the dream went away. That mantra was a call to Guru Rinpoche. He is quite powerful as a, as a protector and he's quite powerful with helping you really with anything that you, that you need. That's how I got involved with Guru Rinpoche. And I tell you, all you really need to do is called to him and he is there for you. As we used to say, I believe in the deep South, Johnny on the spot. So he, um, he anyway, he has wonderful attributes. And I, if you're interested, please Google him, read books about him, look at the YouTube videos and you will learn probably more than you want to know, but he is a wonderful deity. And uh, he's here in his consort. One of his consorts is Sogo Rinpoche. I'm sorry, not Sogo Rinpoche. One of his consorts is Yeshe Sogil. Uh, Sogo Rinpoche was the Buddhist master that I worked with um, who um, ran Rikpa for many years. Uh, Yeshe Sogil is the consort or one of the consorts of Guru Rinpoche and she's the one who hid a lot of the teachings and the treasures that Guru Rinpoche had so that they could be rediscovered in future at a future time when they are needed and I understand that some of those treasures have been uncovered and treasures can be writing it can be mantras, it can be, um, it can be objects. But anyway, that's enough about that. I hope that answers your question, Fred. And I want to thank you for asking me about it. That, that's, that's refreshing, thank you. We are going to talk today a little bit about Chinese New Year which actually is, of course, celebrated on the 10th of February this year. It's the date of the Chinese New Year is the 10th, but how it's determined, for those of you who aren't aware, is it is the second full new moon after the winter solstice. So we have the winter solstice happening on the 21st of December. And whenever that second new moon is, is when Chinese New Year occurs. The 9th of February is considered the New Year's Eve. 
And there's a whole 16 day celebration that occurs around Chinese New Year. This year, we have the year of the wood dragon. A lot of people are unaware that there is an element that goes with the actual animal. With the animals, there are 12 animals, of course, starting with the rat. And I don't remember how it ends. I think it ends, I'm not sure how it, you know, which animal is at the end of it. But anyway, so we, this year, of course, is the year of the dragon, but it's the wood dragon, which is a different element. If you were born during the year of the dragon, you would have to wait until your 60th birthday to have the same element with the animal. So that would be 1964 if you are a wood dragon. You can be dragon, you can be a metal dragon, a fire dragon, um, you can be an air dragon there because there's five different elements uh, available, earth dragon. And so with this particular dragon, it is said that it's of course about creativity, um, it's longevity, there's a lot of, uh, protection and production because we're talking about a dragon which is a mythical animal or at least a mythical creature as far as we know now whether the dragon actually existed or not I don't know but it is fire and there's a, there's no stopping the dragon once it starts it's a 12-year cycle just like it, we in, a, in the Western tradition or even in the Eastern tradition have what we call a Jupiter return. The Jupiter return happens every 12 years. And that means that the planet Jupiter, when you were born, that planet, of course, goes around the zodiac, the different signs, and comes back to the position it was in at the time of your birth to every 12 years. When you have, when you are having your Chinese New Year, if it is your element and your animal, doesn't always mean that it's going to be completely positive for you. What I've found in experience is a lot of times it becomes challenge. It's challenging because the shadow pops up, and that's because we're here to learn and grow and work on our work on ourselves. So when that year comes around, it's almost as though you get a report card and it, what you manifest in that year is determined by what you've worked on and what you still have to, to work on. So I hope that gives you just a little bit more information about the Chinese New Year. I know that, um, I know that the celebration is going to go on for 16 days where they have a festival uh, at the end of that. Now, the Chinese New Year is based on the lunar calendar rather than the Gregorian calendar. And so they're looking at the uh, new moon and the full moon to, um, uh, to determine what day the Chinese New Year is to, you know, is to be on. So let's go ahead and look at the second question, which comes from Candace in Ashland, Oregon. Candace says, what if all the healing tools I've used all my life aren't working? What do I do now? Very good question, Candace, and thank you for asking it. First of all, you know, you're, you're saying that, well, the way I'm reading it is that you're saying none of the things that you have done in the past to help yourself heal have worked. It, how, and I would ask, how are you determining whether or not they've worked or not? You can only determine that by not necessarily what's manifest, not always what's manifesting in your life, but what's going on within you. When we are working on any issue, sometimes it can take years 
decades to actually completely work through that issue, whatever that issue is, because it's like peeling back an onion. You work on the issue in one way or one with one manifestation and then something else pops up and you have to work on that. You have to just keep going with it. When you are working on an issue, you do want to find out what the root cause of the issue is so that hopefully you can move through the healing process quicker without you sitting in front of me, having a conversation with me, I'm not able to gauge what is truly going on. I'm not able to say whether the healing techniques you're, you've used are working or not. If you believe that they're not working, however, what you want to do is take a step back and assess why you feel they're not working and what is manifesting in your life to make you think this and also call on your guides so that you can receive help with whatever issues you are dealing with. We also have to work through karma. There have been times when I know I have worked on issues, but I've had karma with other people, meaning in karma is just energy. You know, it's energy that is out of balance. And when you have energy that is out of balance with someone else or with, with the way you're thinking, the way you're going through life, it, you know, you have to work through that, that karma to balance it. So there's a series of questions that you can ask yourself. Um, and one is, why is this, you know, why am I feeling as though this isn't happening? What is the truth of the situation? And you're asking these questions to your higher mind and waiting on an answer. It could be that you've gotten stuck and aren't getting any movement. And in that case, nothing is going to work until you're ready to move forward. It could be that, you know, your, your personality is sabotaging itself too. I mean, there's a myriad of reasons of why um, healing techniques, of course, don't work. There's a, there's a myriad of reasons why they're not working for you. And you have to get to the bottom of why. And that goes back to, as I said, sitting down with yourself, no one else, yourself, and doing an assessment and talking to your guides, asking for help, asking for why, asking for what you need to do next to get some type of movement. So I hope that helps and answers your question. I'd love to hear from you. Please send me an email and let me know what is going on. And if there's any questions I can answer, let me know if there's any way I can help, please reach out to me. All right, we have come to the end of the session. If you would like to send me a question, please send it to podmacoach at icloud.com. That's podmacoach at icloud.com. If you'd like to learn more about me, you're welcome to peruse my website, podmalifecoaching.com, or you can also, I shouldn't say or, and you can also pick up a copy of my memoir and The Lotus Opened a Memoir. You can find it on any of the online bookstores. I thank you for listening to this week's session. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that little bell so that you are notified about, it, about any future videos that I'm doing. So hopefully I will see you back here next week. Bye-bye.